Welcome back. Well, as you can see, I've taken the liberty of removing uh, the helmet in between the videos. But anyway, uh, we're still looking around this DRC camp on top of this roof in uh, Dani, in Agura. And actually, we've seen this location before. If you remember all the way back uh, when, I, when we were um, exploring Teladon, we linked into Sharper's office in Egura, and using the scope from there we could see an encampment on a rooftop, and that's actually where we are now. Well, let's look at what else is here. There's a whole bunch of crates here with a gas lamp. All these crates have the DRC initials on them. And on this crate it looks like a journey cloth. Check this out. I know the DRC doesn't want us to touch these, but I bet Watson would like to know how these register with the doors too. It makes no sense. And don't lose it. I could barely get it off the wall, and when I did, it was pretty scary. Maybe the weirdest thing is that when I went back later, the cloth I got this piece from was intact again. Nick. So, apparently Nick removed uh, one of the journey cloths from the wall, and it was apparently very hard to do so. Nick, you might remember, was the translator who worked with Douglas Sharper. I also like that the game acknowledges that it doesn't make any sense how these uh, things are supposed to work. Um, over here is a desk and a typewriter, a chair behind the desk. I mean, really, why are you using a typewriter? I mean, this was late 90s at the earliest. <laughs> Probably even early 2000s, so why aren't they just using a computer? There's not much on this side, just this rug, and we can look down from here. Not sure if there's actually anything in particular we're supposed to be looking at. I don't think so. Well, there's not much else uh, around here except for a lot of notebooks. And these notebooks contain a lot of background information. Well, I considered skipping them, but I think I want to read them anyway. Well, there's uh, two different types of notebooks here. The first w uh, type are about some of the Dunny kings, and the others give some general information about Dunny society. Those about the Dunny kings, they tend to uh, tie in a little bit more with the actual story of Uru, and the others are m mostly just background information. The notebooks by themselves aren't all that long individually, but if you put all of them together, there is quite a lot of it, so expect this to take several videos. I'm going to start with the notebooks on the kings, and I'm going to uh, read them in chronological order, starting with this one, King Rhinoref. You might remember that after we finished Teladon, I told you that Rhinoref was the guy who wrote uh, the Age of Dunny, Earth basically, and led people from Gartene here. King Rhinoref. Rhinoref was born in 207 BE, before Earth, on Gartene. He was accepted into the Guild of Writers at the age of five, a standard age, and as the years passed, quickly became one of the finest writers that the Rone had ever seen. Certain records go as far as stating that Rhinoref was unsurpassed in skill by any other writer of the day. By the time he was 90, Rhinoref had achieved the rank of Guild Master and was well on his way to become the Grand Master. However, due to personal convictions, he never achieved that rank. Rhinoref had long been a challenger of the views of the Guild of Writers, as well as the King himself. Rhinoref was apparently very concerned with the Society's views pertaining to the purpose of writing and the challenge of acting responsibly with the great gift given to us by Yavo. Around 73 BE, Rhinoref was asked by the Grand Master to write a descriptive book to a questionable age, at least in the eyes of Rhinoref. He perceived the age being used to house an uncivilized race that could be used for the purposes of the Rone. 
Thus, Rinaref refused to carry out the command from his Grand Master, and after much debating was apparently dismissed from the Guild of Writers. Some records do point to Rinaref willfully, willfully excusing himself from the Guild, although regardless of how he left, much of the society found the dismissal unfair, and some even went so far as to call it detrimental to society. Around 59 BE, the fact that Gartenay would not be able to serve the Rone as a home for much longer was confirmed, and the information made public. Rinaref had long known of the state of Gartenay, and from the time of his dismissal had apparently been working on an age that he felt would be a good place to live for those who wished to follow him. According to various journals, Rinaref managed to attract a few thousand Rone and convince them to follow him in the ways that he felt important and to the age that he had written. The king allowed Rinaref to split away from the Rone, along with a few other smaller groups, while the majority of Rone left Gartenay to a new home world called Terrani. Rinaref took his group to Earth, where he established the Dunny, meaning New Beginning. Rinaref was a strong leader, immediately established himself as king, and reigning for 120 years until his death. Obviously, those who followed Rinaref to Dunny already respected him enough to separate themselves from their family and friends, and thus records point to very few debates or disagreements within the society under the reign of Rinaref. As had always been the case with the Rone, a group of surveyors was sent to Dunny before the group officially moved there, to establish the Great Zero and the line emanating from it. A monument was built on the Great Zero in the year 0 DE. Unlike previous occasions, Rinaref established the line of the Great Zero as set apart for holy buildings without authorization by the reigning king, construction was forbidden. Though it's never stated directly, records strongly imply that it was Rinaref who cho chose where the city would be established. He seemed to base his decision on two factors, which probably made the decision an easy one. First was the line of the Great Zero. It seemed an obvious spot to base the city, with the most important religious structures being directly on the line and the rest of the city surrounding its center. The second factor was a group of waterfalls that flowed from the ceiling of the cavern to an area adjacent to the line of the Great Zero. The fresh flowing water was perfect for drinking. A new writer's guild, with a fairly different rule set than the one that had existed on Gartenay, was constructed almost immediately, 8 DE, under the direction of Rinaref. By the year 100 DE, Rinaref had directed the recreation of the 18 major guilds. The guilds were dedicated to Yavo on the Day of the Circle, a celebration not only of the completion of the major guilds, but a celebration of new guilds, which Rinaref believed were healthier than those that existed in Gartenay. Guilds that have been established to please Yavo and not themselves, Rinaref said. Certain records pointed to the guilds on Gartenay becoming extremely competitive with one another and focusing more upon having the best facility and carrying out their duty to Yavo and the people. In an effort to curb that kind of competition, Rinaref implemented the list of restrictions upon guild construction. The restrictions including guidelines pertaining to placement, facing the Great Zero, size, shape, and minor visual guidelines. guidelines. Though one of Rinaref's top priorities was construction of a temple, there were disagreements as to specifics, causing numerous delays in the finalization of construction plans. Eventually, construction was started in 48 DE, and the temple was completed in 63 DE, known as the Regal, Regal Tovogu, Sorry, Regal Tavorum, the temple to Yavo was meant as a place of worship as well as a reminder of the prophesied great king who would come to them soon. Rinaref also made it a priority to install massive fans that would supply the cavern with fresh air. Natural openings existed, but it was quickly discovered that they did not supply ample circulation for the cavern. As a result, massive shafts and fans were built and installed over a 30 year period between 84 and 114 DE. It should be noted that numerous records point to a small group of Dunny disappearing upon completion of the fans. It is most often assumed that they remained on the surface of the earth to live. Throughout his reign, records point to multiple occasions on which Rinaref refused to build a palace for himself. Instead, he lived in a fairly basic home, similar in fashion to most of his fellow citizens, and made it especially clear that until Yavo had a new home, he could not allow himself one. Although, even after the temple was completed, Rinaref refused to build a palace, always focusing more on the religious and government sites. Rinaref's own philosophy centered on the fact that it was much easier to focus on Yavo and his wishes when, his cir when circumstances were difficult and struggles were more abundant. It was strongly believed that Rinaref's refusal to build a palace was an expression of that philosophy. In 120 DE, Rinaref died of apparent heart complications. He was 327 years old. Though he had married, he left no children. As a result, he chose one of his apprentices, named Alesh, to succeed him. Well, there are some footnotes here as well. 
taken from the memoirs of Elesh, from the oath of the new guild of writers written by Drinareff, taken from the journals of Grand Master Nation of the Guild of Legislators, Cartonet's son was dying and would eventually cause a rapid decrease in temperature, making it an inhabitable age, I suppose it has, should say, uninhabitable age. The Great Zero itself was usually based on a prominent natural landmark within an age. From the Great Zero, a line was drawn usually toward Magnetic North to aid in navigation, construction, etc. Okay, I have to stop here, so I'll continue in the next video.